Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video, Confront the AP. I'm looking for feedback from others who have been through something similar. Mine, male 31, and female 28, wife of 5 years, 14 high school sweethearts. I became preoccupied with graduate school and working two jobs, she began a new pastime, and the AP, male 4 to 5, fill the void. AP is unmarried. They had once on a vacation last month, and she instantly left me for him. I discovered via my investigation that they had never been intimate before. We'd been one month since D-Day. She has a new residence, and she claims she doesn't remember who he was to her, BF slash GF, friend with benefits, etc. They are, nevertheless, still seeing one other. I knew who he was. He knows who I am and has bought me a couple beers. My concern is if I will be able to live with myself if I do not confront him about it. I'm certain that I'll be able to keep my cool and avoid becoming physical. I simply want to approach him and yell, what the are you doing? Begin conversing. I'm not expecting it. Response from him. I'm not searching for an explanation. I think all I want to say is that I'm not happy with what's going on. Thoughts? Thank you very much. For the time being, I've opted not to confront. He's a jerk who does not deserve my emotional suffering. Update 1. We're regressing. Background. High school sweethearts for 14 years, married for 5 years. She, 29 female, dumped me, 31 male, in favor of a 45M male from her pastime group. She informed me about a 6-month EA program that concluded with a PA position. She ended our relationship due to a lack of intimacy. I believe she became to the dopamine rushes she had during her EA and forgot I used to make her feel that way. She now has her own apartment, where he spends the majority of his evenings. It's been nearly two months after D-Day, and I'm in desperate need of assistance. We're still in North Carolina, which is incredibly convenient. My recovery seems to be reversing in the past week or so. I was in a decent position. Till that point, but now I can't quit hating myself. I know it's not my fault, but I can't quit thinking about things I wish I had done differently. This isolation offers me much too much free time to daydream. I eventually got to the point where I was just thinking about her for around 6 hours a day rather than the whole day, but now I'm back to 8-10 hours each day. One of our common friends asked whether it would make me feel better if they ended up marrying, as if it wasn't just a fling, but she fell in love with him. Obviously, my response was hell no, but I can't hit it out of my thoughts as if she knows something I don't. It irritates me. I've told this buddy not to bring up the subject with me again. I know she's the one who's broken and I was a decent husband, but I can't stop hating myself for not being the man she needed after all these years. Thank you very much. Update 2. It finally occurred, according to the second update. Background. My five-year-old wife. We were 14-year-old high school sweethearts. Cheated on me with an older guy while on vacation with her boxing group. It had been a six-month EA, culminating in a PA and her leaving me for him. I'm now going through a divorce. Update in four months I can't help but giggle at the insanity of 2020, and we're only halfway through. SDBXW and I have been NC for about three months. Our divorce papers have been filed uncontested, and our hearing date has been set for the end of June. Theoretically, it should all be finished shortly. She's been telling everyone that they're no longer together because she fell in love with someone else. Doesn't it sound romantic? Of course, she decides to leave out the whole cheating portion. Overall, I've been feeling great. As much as I despise the quarantine, it forced me to remain at home and grow accustomed to being alone. I now look forward to my alone time. On weekdays when I work from home, I have a highly productive and healthy schedule that I follow. I've gone on around eight dates with a beautiful new lady who is overjoyed to be with me, and it feels great. NRE really feels like a drug, but I have the foresight to recognize that this is what these sensations are. This is the simple part. I've been very honest with her about my circumstances, and she's been quite understanding. When I'm having a difficult day, typically brought on by a dream, I tell her that I need some space that day, and she's quite understanding. After three months of NC, my SDBXW contacted me, saying, Hey, I was just checking in to make sure everything was well with you. If you need to speak to someone, I am available. For want of a better description, this message truly messed with me. I'm sure most of you can identify. I felt grief, rage, uncertainty, and everything in between. I had a few responses typed down, 
but I erased them all as well as the content. I'm pleased I did it now. Then today, when I contacted her about some issues, I continued receiving emails from our former bank. She apologized once again, saying, sorry about that. If you don't want to chat, I understand, but if you want, please know that I am here for you. Again, erased with no response, no contact is really the only option. It's natural for me to want to read into these messages. I wonder whether things with old guy dipshit are finally coming apart, or if she has something she wants to tell me, or if she heard I'm dating someone else. Anyway, once again, thank you very much. Everyone warned she'd attempt to re-enter my life in some way or another, but I didn't believe them. And now we're here. Wow, thanks for the gold. Thank you very much for this community once again. The replies have been incredible, and they have helped me understand the full value of that message. Update 3. Mutual Acquaintances Those pals eventually responded. Well, it's taken us a week to react because we honestly don't know what to say. It seems that your mind is made up, and we don't have much say in the matter. We hope you are pleased with your choice and that it brings you serenity. We'll always be here if you change your mind, but we're not going to allow anybody tell us who we can and cannot be friends with. We're all adults, and what occurred between you two is your business. We really hope that this isn't the end of our relationship, but the ball is now in your court. I also discovered that they are in an open relationship that is not functioning. This might explain why they are more forgiving of her conduct than the normal relationship. Last night, I got into an altercation with some pretty good mutual friends who continued attempting to console my ex. They continued telling her that there are two sides to every story and that she is in pain as well, still with APBTW. This SMS was delivered to them this morning. Please let me know if this seems realistic. Sorry if things got heated last night. I was outraged not because of exua activities, which had already occurred. What wounded my sentiments the most was when you claim you didn't know whose narrative to trust. As I already said, I'm not flawless, and no one is. The truth is that we did not grow apart, and we did not agree to split ways. She had an affair with me. I was used and then abandoned. That is the reality. How individuals perceive and act on that story is entirely up to them. I know you care about her as a friend, which is reasonable. But I can't be your friend as well. I need individuals in my life who believe and trust in me, who aren't also friends with the individual who purposely and knowingly caused me so much pain. I'm not asking you to choose sides, you've already said that you won't. But this continual straddling of the fence does not work for me. When I discovered that my closest buddy had cheated on his wife, I informed him that he was no longer welcome in my life. That is not acceptable to me. Those are my principles. I love you guys and value you. Relationship but I've realized that you'll never view her the way I do. I've never had a breakup with a buddy before, and, to be honest, I feel horrible about it all, but I also know that it had to happen. Update 4. Do you think in black and white? Three different individuals have told me in the past month or so that my thinking has become too stark and white following D-Day, six months ago. Every time, the context has been different, and I wanted to check in with the community to see if I'm overreacting. The first is clearly with my ex WW. When I tell people that I'm not, yet, prepared to forgive her for what she did and that I will never speak to her again, especially while she's still with her AP, some friends, from whom I have since separated, tell me that she is suffering too and that I am being too callous about someone I used to love. I let go of the aforementioned friends because they continued attempting to justify my ex WW conduct based on what she told them. They also continued to provide her updates on my life even after I requested them not to. Finally, I don't believe I'd be friends with folks who attempt to be on the fence. I told them there was no explanation for what she did, and if they didn't feel the same way, we couldn't be friends anymore. See my post history for more context. My mother believes I overreacted and am thinking in black and white. Today, I was discussing a couple I know who have a really toxic relationship. He was arrested for domestic abuse on her, and he's a drinker. My excellent buddy said that maybe they are simply trying their best, and that it is working for them. She sleeps around, and they met on Ashley Madison. No, I responded that garbage is bad for you. Again, the charge of thinking in black and white. My issue is am I insane to believe that I do not want these kind of individuals in my life? Have I grown harsh and frigid as a result of infidelity, or do I just have greater clarity now that I been through it? I've been attempting to be more forceful recently and I'm not sure how others are reacting to the shift. 
Any advice would be much welcomed. Thank you. Final update. Nine-month update and coping hello, everyone. In my case, my male 31, wife, female 28 of five years, and we had 14 high school sweethearts. I became preoccupied with graduate school and working two jobs, she began a new pastime, and the AP, male 46, filled the void. AP is unmarried. They moved in together after she confessed to having an affair for a year. Divorced in May after being separated in January. We haven't spoken since. If you read my post history, you'll find that I cut a lot of friends out of my life. People who made excuses for her conduct, I subsequently discovered, had a history of infidelity or were in failed open partnerships. I no longer have time for such folks. The book No More Mr. Nice Guy was really useful in teaching me how to put my foot down on this subject. The previous few months have largely been great. On the advice of my friends, I began using a dating app shortly after my divorce was completed to get my feet wet. In hindsight, it was too soon, but I had dragged myself out of the gutter and was sick of staying alone in my home for four months during COVID lockdown. I had a decent pattern going and I wasn't blaming myself anymore, owing in large part to the wonderful folks on this sub. I went to therapy once a week until August, when my therapist suggested that I should be able to function on my own, which I agreed with. I still have generalized anxiety, which I never experienced before, and it is tough for me to manage. Lifting large weights is absolutely beneficial. In August, I completed graduate school and started a new career, which was tremendously lucky and helped alleviate a lot of anxiety about the future. As it turns out, the third person I went on a date with is a wonderful lady. I wasn't expecting anything so fast, but the goal of going on a date is to meet someone like her, so I persisted. We've been dating for six months and everything is going swimmingly. I'm an open book about what occurred, and she knows I'm not perfect, but our communication is fantastic. I used to be nervous whenever there was a first. Partly because this dating is all new to me, and partly because my former life triggers me. First dates, first kisses, first sleepovers, first intimate encounters, and so on are all part of the process, but they are also difficult. I'm not sure whether it's because everything occurred so quickly, or if it would have happened otherwise, but it doesn't really matter now since it's all in the past. I'm really ashamed to disclose that I, too, suffer from anxiety. However, I believe that is something that we males should be more honest about. Fortunately, my GF has been wonderfully supportive and understanding, but when it occurs, I'm quite critical of myself. It's not something I'm comfortable discussing with my female therapist. I can usually get out of my brain, but not always. My concern is, has anybody else experienced generalized or anxiety as a result of infidelity? If so, how did you overcome it? If you don't want to share your problems openly, send me a private message. Thank you very much.